guys and gals, never here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's Sunny Mountain Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of What It Feels Like. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. I kind of think of you as, well, Lizzie's brother in a way. So to some extent, you're mine, too. Don't tell me you eloped with her. Heh, <laughs> nah, she'd never marry me if you weren't there to see it. But my point is that I want you to be okay. For your sake and for Lizzie's. So if you ever need to talk to someone, I'm here too. Would that officially make us friends then? Yeah, it would. Good then. He smiles at me and I can practically feel the tension start to dissipate from the air. Another win for honesty. I guess all those nursery rhymes had it right after all. Alright, enough sap. We got shit to do. Got any songs you're working on? I do have a couple of songs I've been writing in private, but I'm not so sure which one I should show him. There are two in particular I want him to hear. One is deep, pursed on a little depressing. Not the best for a bar performance, but I would really love, but I would really want to work on it with him. The other one is more upbeat, a little pop and cutesy, which isn't a bad thing to have as a performance song, but I'm not too sure what he'd think of it. Personal song... Okay. Yeah, there is one song I kind of want you to hear. Cool, let's hear it then. So after a couple minutes of fine-tuning the melody I wanted, we play a bit of the verse. Oh, that's cool. Bye-bye, it's American Pie. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh god, is this a copyrighted song? Please, I hope this is not a copyrighted song. You know, maybe I should have turned the volume up on this, but I don't know if it's copyrighted or not. <coughs> oh, goodness. Oh, okay. All right, that's pretty cool. So that's just a snippet, um, and we can figure out the chorus later. Right. Did, did you like it? Hmm? Oh, yeah, definitely. The lyrics are great. It's just, are you okay performing this? It seems pretty personal. Well, yeah, isn't all art kind of personal? Sure, but, hmm. If you say so, then. Don't I don't think I have to ask who this is about. <laughs> yeah, most songs I write these days are about him. What exactly do you see in him? He relaxes his grip on the guitar, giving me his full attention, and I look away in embarrassment. And Baxter has asked me similar questions, and I don't ever know how to respond, so I give Wyatt a non-answer, too. I guess everything? He's nice when he wants to be, and he makes me feel safe. Well, I'd offer my advice, but I doubt you'd listen. Just be careful with him. And be careful with Baxter, too. I'm not sure what's going on between you two, but if you're in love with Jacob, I can't see how being with him will end well. I've got a plan. Don't you worry. I do not like the sound of that. Your plans suck. Hey, you suck! Blech. Being silly doesn't count as a comeback. Then I'm out of options. Let's finish up the rest of your song and call it a day. Sound good? Sounds great! After finishing the song, Wyatt and I regroup in the living room with Lizzie, who is patiently teaching Baxter the chords of some other, to some of her other songs. When she sees us coming through, she sighs with relief, throwing her, throwing her bass aside on the couch and looking at me with tired eyes. Milo, I love you, but your boyfriend's brain is a wad of mush. Hey, it's a lot of chords to memorize, okay? Baxter gestures for me to stand by his side. When I do, he hugs me by the waist and buries his face onto my stomach. Come tell her, Russo! I lay my paws on his head, blushing at the sudden affection, but ultimately decide to play along with his antics. Yeah, Lizzie, Baxter's brain was designed to store as little information as possible, so be nice to him. All he knows is how to look cool while playing the guitar. <laughs> I love Lizzie's look. Exactly! Some of us are made for coolness, Lizzie! Yeah, well, some of us weren't made to deal with morons all day. I'm taking a nap. She flashes at me a smile and stretching her arms over her head. She gets up, walks over, walks over to her room, shutting the door behind her. That, that kind of her, that's kind of her less rude way of telling you guys to leave. Yeah, we figured. Less rude. We'll see you later then, Wyatt. Come on, Bax. 
We say our goodbyes and head outside, Baxter puffing up his chest in contempt. Well, that was fun. Got everything off your chest back there, Russo? Yeah, I think I did. Good. See what I tell you. Taking it out is the way to go. He starts to head towards his bike, but when he realizes I stopped walking, he stops in his tracks. What is it? Um, well, since I'm being honest today, you remember when I got mad at you yesterday at breakfast? Uh, yeah, I think so. Why? The reason that was because you hugged me to play that part, but I kind of thought you were being genuine, because we had that talk and all. So it just felt fake, I guess. Oh. It's okay, though. I mean, I don't blame you for it. It's what we're supposed to be doing anyway, so... No, but... You're right. That was pretty shitty of me. Can't believe I didn't think about that. It's fine, really. He seems upset now, and I wonder if I should have brought it up at all, but he quickly shakes his head and smiles at me, getting close. Hey, for what it's worth, I'm sorry I did that. Seriously. Let me make it up to you. What are you doing right now? Uh, nothing, really. was just gonna head home. Well, why don't we head there together, and I'll get our project started for us. How's that sound? Oh, right. Thank you, y'all. Water time. Ah, uh, the project. Almost forgot about it, didn't ya? I wish I could forget. So? Hmm, fine. No funny business, though. Maybe a little funny business. He winks at me, and I get on his bike, regretting my decision already. Holy crap, you're rich as shit, Russo! Baxter gawks as he sets foot, sets foot inside my house, looking everywhere like a kid in a toy factory. Nah, it's just a nice house. Psh, bullshit, all you rich kids are the same. Oh no, it's my parents' money. No, no, I'm not rich, I'm... <laughs> upper middle class. He says all this in an obnoxious British accent, I glare at him, blushing. Well, it's true, it's not like I'm spoiled or anything, I barely get an allowance. Milo, you're 21 and you're still getting an allowance? Right, not rich and spoiled at all. Yeah, actually, this house kind of reminds me of one of my, uh, like, one of my aunt and uncle's houses. Very similar design. Living room is, living room is different, but the living room did have a fireplace. Oh, that's funny. No piano, though. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Did you come here to feel poor or are you going to do my homework? Not gonna give me a tour of the mansion first? Stop it! I lead Baxter up to my room, and before I even tell him to, he makes himself at home, immediately sitting on my bed and flopping comfortably on it. Ah, the Russo Sweet! Ah, don't call it that! He looks around the room, somewhat in admiration, nodding and taking everything in. Whoa, you got a ton of Polaroids! He gets up and walks over to my desk, where, sure enough, an array of old Polaroids lay scattered around it, and I instantly get embarrassed. Oh, uh, those are old. I chuckle nervously as I slip past him, grabbing some and shoving them into the desk drawer. Oh, wait, I wanted to see. No, no, we're here to work, remember? We've got time, come on, show me. Unless they're naughty pictures. In which case, now I really want to see. They're normal pictures, you perv. I just don't really show these to anyone. Are they private? Well, I scribble lyrics on them sometimes, so a little, yeah. Ah, well, all right, I'll drop it if you want. I glance at the pictures on the desk, filled with private thoughts and special moments that I haven't thought of in months. Would I really be okay showing all this to Baxter? You can look on one condition. Anything. You show me You show me some pictures of you first. As he rolls his eyes playfully and whips out his phone, handing it to me. Alright, go nuts, since you want to see me so bad. I eagerly look through his camera roll and find a lot of different pictures of him. Some are normal at bars, parties, during lunch with his friends, but some are a bit more... risque. So, you know, water time. Oh yeah, who could have guessed that Baxter has risque pictures of himself on his phone? Shirtless pictures in front of a mirror, poses that seem to insinuate a certain type of mood. Just, who is he sending these to? Uh... Okay... Eventually, though, I hit a jackpot. Baxter in his high school graduation. Oh, so cute! He's in a fancy deep red button-up shirt with lots of different guys hugging and posing with him. Seems like Baxter is always surrounded by people. He looks so young here. That was like four years ago. Do I look that much older now? Well, you look more mature now? A little taller, maybe. I just had really tall friends in high school. No kidding, this guy is huge. I point to a big, burly gray wolf, hugging a much smaller raccoon in his arms. Oh, Marcus. Yeah, he's a big guy, all right. 
They sure seem close. Are they fucking or what? Ha! I know you're joking, but they actually were dating. Wait, seriously? Yep, that... He points to the raccoon. It is Callum. They started dating like halfway through senior year. Totally heads over heels for each other. You're fucking with me. Gay guys in West Virginia? Crazy, right? But it's true. Swear it. Well, where are they now? Uh, last I heard, Caleb went to study law in Tennessee, I think, and Marcus went to college for like two years and then dropped out and joined the army. Kind of out of nowhere if you ask me, but eh, who am I to judge? Are they still together, though? I think so. I should really call them. I stare at them for a while, looking at their faces, their closeness, and suddenly, I believe him. They seem happy, content. If I look at them for long enough, I can imagine them clearly, holding hands, hugging in a school hallway, whispering secrets only the other knows. And slowly, a feeling of deep, burning envy boils inside my guts. So it is possible to have a high school romance like that, even if you're gay? Why couldn't I have that then? Why was the only guy I had a crush on in high school some stoner who sold me weed once in the boys' bathroom? I quickly decide I don't like Marcus and Calum. Well, deal's a deal, I guess. I hand Baxter his phone back and grab my laptop, sitting on my bed and shooing him off. Go ahead, knock yourself out, but do not read anything I wrote on them out loud. You have my word. He excitedly pulls out my desk chair and plops down, and to avoid dying of embarrassment, I pour all of my focus into my work. About half an hour later, I've got a decent outline for our presentation, and when I look up, Baxter's still quietly looking through my large collection of Polaroids. Hey! His ears perk up, but he doesn't turn to look at me. What's up? You know, when you said you wanted to make it up to me, this isn't exactly what I had in mind. He finally looks up to look up, looks up at me, smiling apologetically. Sorry, this is just really interesting stuff. I fidget nervously, without really realizing it. I let Baxter see what is essentially my diary. What's so interesting exactly? Well, for starters, the way you write. It's totally different from how you talk and talk, and yet, I can still tell you that you wrote it, if that makes sense. You've got loads of pictures of scenery, but you write more lyrics on the pictures than with other people in them. You barely have pictures of yourself, and the ones where you do show up, you scribble your face out with marker. How come? Yep. Bad idea. Uh... I guess I just don't like seeing myself in pictures. Hmm, is it an insecurity thing? Maybe? I haven't really analyzed myself like that. I see. Well, that's a shame, then. What is? That I couldn't see in any of the pictures. Yeah, sorry, but you're not missing much. I haven't exactly changed a lot. Hmm. He swivels around in my chair, his eyes landing on the small camera sitting on top of my desk. Does this still have Polaroids in it? I think so. Why? Oh, looks like you know. He grabs it and turns to me, grinning wide. Can I take a picture of you now? What? Why would you even want that? I don't know, it was a memento, I guess, just to remember you by. What if I get drafted to war tomorrow? Then what will I longingly stare at while I dream of a better future? That's cute and all, but I look awful in the pictures. You do not want, you do not want this face tucked into your wallet. You say that like you think you're not good looking. I do think I'm not good looking. You're kidding, right? Uh, no. Milo, how can you not know you're hot? This takes me by surprise, so much so that instead of feeling flattered, I'm just incredibly confused. I'm not, though? Is this one of those he's gorgeous but doesn't realize it kind of situations? I don't know what you're on, but the only gorgeous one between us is you. Well, yeah, I know I'm gorgeous. But the fact that you see yourself as unattractive is genuinely baffling. See, I know it was an insecurity thing. If you can't see you're hot, then that's on you because it's just the truth. And now is when I get embarrassed, blushing hard as I watch him fiddle with my camera. Baxter thinks I'm hot? I mutter an embarrassed well thanks under my breath, but by now Baxter's already made his way towards me, sitting on the edge of my bed and pointing the lens right at my face. Alright, I'm gonna pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. I'm gonna give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Tresum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye.